Welcome to the Business with Beers podcast. This is the place where we help entrepreneurs expand their business, build their wealth, and generate passive income. I'm your host, Brian Beers, an entrepreneur who's on a mission to inspire growth from everyone around me. Remember that you need to take the actions others won't, and you can live the life that others don't. Please be sure to check out my weekly newsletter that now drops every Thursday. It includes one quote, one tweet, one podcast recommendation, plus some business and investing insight from me. It's short and it's sweet. My goal is to provide you with just a couple gold nuggets to help inspire your growth. Go to brianbeers.com to subscribe. Hello, everyone. This interview is part of a new series where I talk to someone who recently became a franchisee. They will share their journey, their process for evaluating uh, franchises and what they wish they knew. So today we have Mike Oakley from Richmond, Virginia, who I helped become a franchisee with Dumpster Dudes earlier this year. So welcome to the show, Mike. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. So talk to me about your background a little bit. What did you do before uh, going down the franchise path? Yeah, definitely. Um, gosh, I, I would consider myself a corporate America person, um, but also a real estate guy. So, you know, while having a corporate America job out of college, um, I dabbled into real estate as well. And I, I would say I did almost every job you could in real estate from lending to being an agent to um, purchasing my own properties as investment per, uh, reasons and, and as well as teaching. Um, I taught classes on how to invest in real estate. So um, I would consider that my m biggest background um, coming from real estate and uh, before deciding to do this. So and in fact, I'm still involved in real estate, to be honest with you. OK. And in what capacity? Um, well, uh, I, I still work with uh, a friend of mine. He's actually a syndicator out of Austin, Texas. Um, I still work with him and, and his investors. Um, as he purchases more apartment complexes and then I invest with him. And then of course, if I find a, a deal, I'll, I'll invest myself, but I just haven't been looking okay. recently with, with interest rates and everything, you know, you just don't, it's not quite the environment. Yep. Awesome. And so then what attracted you to buying a franchise versus, you know, going down an independent uh, business or, or starting your own? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think the idea of a franchise for me um, was the business in a box idea. Um, you know, it, it, it seems like buying a franchise, they had everything almost laid out for you. Um, follow this path and this is where you'll be kind of a thing. And I like that idea of not having to, uh, necessarily try and fail, try and fail until I figure it out, uh, that they've already had successful businesses, successful franchisees. And that's what attracted me to it, to just really the business in a box of, Hey, here it's laid out for you. All you need to do is follow the plan. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's what attracts I think, a lot of people is that, that speed to, to get it, you know, opened and they've kind of For already sure. done a lot of things. They've made a lot of mistakes along the way. Yeah. And, you know, you kind of get a, a head start on, on, on a lot of that. Um, and so, yeah. So then can you explain the business model for dumpster dudes? How do you guys make money? Yeah, definitely. So it's a pretty simple business model, which is one thing that really attracted me to it. Um, I, I wanted a simple business that I didn't want to do anything complicated, um, just something simple to run. You know, as I get older, my entrepreneurship life will go more complicated businesses. But that's the idea of the business model is is very simple. It's <clears throat> you have a certain amount of dumpsters and you rent them to a customer or and or uh, a contractor. So it could be business to business, business to customer, consumer. Um, so I like both sides of that, but it's fairly simple in the fact that I drop a dumpster off, I pick a dumpster up, I take it to the landfill or transfer station, what have you, and, and that's it. I mean, there isn't any other complications to that. So um, it's it's a very, very simple business model, and that's really what attracted yep. me to so, it mostly. So, so dump, you know, renting out dumpsters you know, by the day, pretty much, right? Absolutely, um, yeah. Um, we, we do it typically by uh, the week. Okay. Um, so we'll do it for seven days as a rental typically. Um, so you get a week, whoever rents it gets a week to, you know, put what they want to in it that, uh, that they can. Okay. And then when did you open? Uh, we got started in April of this year. So just a few months ago. Oh, and it's, uh, it's July 5th today. So then what have, talk to me about the sales, like whatever you're willing to share kind of the, the first month, the first, second month, I think we're now at what on the th third month almost here. Um, right. Yeah. Just started the third month. Um, so I actually pulled up my cells here just so I have them here for you guys. Um, 
So starting in April, first month, I had total revenue of $834. That was two weeks of being open, of no one in this city knowing who I was or what I was doing. Yep. Um, and so going on to um, May, I had a goal of um, doing about 10 dumpsters in the month of May, uh, just because marketing is still getting going. So I went from 800 uh, pretty much $800 in April to $3,700 in May um, was my revenue. And then going into June, uh, second full month, I go from $3,700, I jumped up to $8,063. So June over almost doubled May, two months in and uh, just about broke even uh, two months in, which makes me very happy for sure. So about 8,300 is roughly your like mainly debt payment. You probably, probably got debt, right, to, to buy kind of all the dumpsters. Um, Correct. Right, right. So you've got the you've got the debt payment for the truck and the dumpsters. Um, you've got the franchise fee as well. Yep. Um, and then uh, my marketing is included yep. in that. Plus gas fees and dump fees yep. is also included in that. Um, so, yeah, right around uh, seven to eight thousand a month is, is my break even point. Got it. OK. So yeah, it's not bad. I mean, two less than two and a half months in, and you're already from like a cash flow basis breaking even. And then obviously right. July, hopefully. What's your what's your goal for here, July? July, my goal is hit ten thousand this month. Yep. Okay. Which then makes you makes your cash flow positive, right? Cash flow positive um, three months in, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Awesome. And that was that your expectation? Like, how did you you know what was your goal when you it's, first started? Yeah, I, I would say my expectation was to break even around the three month mark. Um, so to almost do it in the second month mark is, is, is really great and makes me very happy. Um, at this part of, you know, time of the year is a little bit busier time of year for this type of business. Um, as school stops, people start doing home projects and things like that. So um, it's a little easier, I think, to get dumpsters this time of year, which is really why I wanted to get started and get going. Um, but yeah, my break even goal was about three months in and talking to the other franchisees, that seemed pretty realistic. Okay. Um, so being cash follow positive in three months is just great. Yeah. And so then what did you like about, like, what do you, what do you like about dumpster dudes? What do you like about the team there? Like, what were some of the big reasons you, you choose to, to go ahead with it? Yeah, definitely. That's in the, my first short answer is what is there not to like about them? Honestly. Um, when I first started actually, when I first started talking to you about these guys, yeah. Um, I, I went and they had, you know, discovery day. I've never bought a franchise before. I didn't know discovery days. I didn't know any of these things. Yep. And so, um, I went and had a discovery day with them and, and got to meet all the owners, uh, everyone involved with, you know, from Dustin who started the actual dumpster business to Brian and Aaron, who are now come on to uh, run the franchise or part of it. Um, that right there sold me on the business. Uh, the business model was simple. I, yep. I knew I wanted to do something like this. That was easy for me. Why I chose them is meeting them in person and kind of seeing who they were. Um, and since then, it's been nothing but everything that they've they said they would do. They've, the support I've received from them is crazy. I I call one of the owners, Aaron, almost every day. I have to apologize to him all the time, but he picks up, and and yeah. and, and that's why I chose these guys because of this and it's it's been incredible their support has okay. been amazing through this yeah i think that's in their new franchise right what what number of yeah. franchisee are you six seven um i think i'm closer to seven yeah seven, um, okay. so, yeah, so new, no, early no. early stages right and i think for anybody talking sure. to an early stage franchisor that personal connection with the franchisor is by far the most important factor right because like the model itself, like you said, the running of the dumpsters, it kind of is what it is. It's like the jockey, right? It's like the person sure. riding it, driving it forward. Like, and, and you, and that's like, that's the benefit of like working with someone early is you get to work shoulder to shoulder, you know, the founder or the, the leadership guys you can text call, like they're, they're very open Absolutely. Um, versus like, you know, a brand that's, you know, we're really far along in the process, like aren't gonna, you know, they're so busy and they've got so many people below them that it's just not the same as, as working with the founders. So, and that's one thing, you know, in talking with you uh, more about it too, that's one thing that um, you, you really, you know, put in my mind is the support that you get from the franchisor is so important. 
and and looking at you know the bigger companies uh it just wasn't attractive to me like i i'm happy to be with a new franchise or it's been great yeah which is the which is the, like a benefit of franchising right there's this whole spectrum of 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 skill sets and different things to match you so like you find the franchise that matches you which in your case is a smaller personal like you know feels like a really good partner uh and then other people want like the big corporation and they want the big infrastructure and like you know they they like all that and that's what is really cool about franchising is no matter like where you fall in that spectrum there's there's something for you and i think it's just important for people to get clarity around that and like you got that clarity pretty pretty early on that hey i want a small franchise or right i want somebody who can who i can work with and you know at a personal level and so then that eliminates all these other big these big players um 100 so. yeah i think you're absolutely right i mean it took me time to really think about what i wanted in this i mean you're putting up money to start a yep. business like you you really need to take the time to think about what you want and um and it took me time to think about that and, and realize what i wanted uh, one for my business and two out of a franchise or yep and so what, what what were some of the other due diligence part of it obviously i know you met the team you probably talked to some other franchisees like any anybody any other advice in terms of doing some of this due diligence um, yeah, so meeting the team was important. Um, the, talking to the other franchisees, I really liked. I, I actually didn't know not buying a franchise, you can, you can do that. Uh, talk to other business owners of that's your doing. So that was extremely helpful in making my decision. Um, but as far as uh, other due diligence going on, it's, you know, talk about the FDD, the item 19 there, understanding the financials, understanding what... Um, the cost to get this up and running is going to be and how to plan for the months where you're not cash flow positive starting out. Um, so doing due diligence on that and what I think on my market here, um, would I be competitive here with the other dumpster businesses here? Um, and then of course, in my opinion, that, you know, a little drop for you over here, Brian, just, just you, you help me, you help me understand the questions to ask these guys. Um, because I didn't know, I didn't know what to ask, what to ask about the FDD, what to ask about when I signed the operating, um, the agreement yep. with them. And, and that was so huge for me just to know what to ask in general. Yep. Yeah. Great. And I think that's a, uh, that's, that's a big part of it, right? It's just building a team on your side, you know, whether it's me or, or, or anybody else that, that can just sure. help you through it and that you're not alone. And that's like the best part of 100%, it. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a big financial decision to make, you know, so um, nothing's ever going to be perfect and, and you're not going to have 100% information that you want at all times, but you, you do your best to get what you can and make an educated decision. Yep. So then how, how much time are you spending a week, a month, you know, uh, on this? So I'm what they call an owner operator. Um, okay. So I actually am in the truck driving right now. Um, so starting out on a busy day, I mean, if I schedule a busy day, I'll, I've done nine hours a day, um, before, and then, um, you know, light days are just, I'll hop in the truck and go do a delivery and could be back in an hour and a half. Um, other than mess, the rest of that is spent on trying to market, trying to do different things to stand out in this market. Um, but on, on average, um, I feel like I, if I average it out over a day, like three hours a day right now. Um, okay. Yeah. Cause some days are super busy and then some days are, are lighter. Right. Um, right, right. But being owner operator, I'm, I'm in the truck doing the deliveries. Yep. Uh, and I wanted that. I wanted to be owner operator. I want to, before I hire a driver, understand what it takes to be a driver, how to do things. So I make sure that they know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's always great to, you, to actually know what the job is, know what it's like, you know, you can't be bullshitted yeah. when, you know, you're the one that, <laughs> that trained them what to do. Right. Like, uh, I right. think that's, I know it can happen cause I've done it. So, yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, that, that's great. And then you can build, you know, then you build the business and then if you can get somebody, you know, on a part-time basis to help you out and then, you know, you can start then focusing more and more on the higher value tasks, which would be kind of the referrals, right. And building kind of probably building that contractor right. uh, network. Um, Correct. Absolutely. Now, so like dumpsters, right? It's highly, you know, competitive, saturated business. What were kind of, what are some things that you're you're doing to kind of stand out in in a in a crowded space? Um, and that's, I think that was a challenge going into this too. Is how am I going to stand out? Because, I mean, the dumpster business is pretty straightforward. 
It, yep. You call me to rid a dumpster, you know. Yep. Um, and, you, and you either so, say yes, you can do it, or you like don't pick up the phone. And <laughs> exactly. Not, like, like what the if alternative you're, is? If you're yeah. looking for a dumpster, like it's there's no you know, you're not checking out anything. You're looking for a yeah, dumpster. Yeah. So. How many dents are on uh, the left side? <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got that question. Okay. So yeah. it's, is it clean dumpster? Does it have holes in it? You know. Um, but standing out, uh, for me, the first thing I do uh, to try and stand out was when I was doing my market uh, due diligence. I would call the other dumpster companies and kind of see, you know, do they answer the first call? Do they call back? How's their customer service? So I make sure that no matter what, I'm better than them at all of that. Um, I'm constantly friendly on everything. I, I answer the phone. I return calls. I answer emails immediately just to let everyone know that they can get a hold of me no matter what. Um, the second thing I, I'm doing to stand out is, is I try to getting involved in the community. So in my HOA here, um, I come up with a plan with the, the HOA to do a community like disposal day. So I will put my dumpster at the corner of a cul-de-sac in the community, have everyone come and dump whatever they want in to fill it up and I'll take it away for free um, just to get my name out. You know, uh, mm -hmm. there's homeowners here that just doesn't know I exist. And so I'm um, trying to do these different type of tasks that may not necessarily result in business at the moment, but down the line can absolutely yep. uh, do it. So just doing different things like that to stand out. Yeah. I mean, that could even become a profit center that the HOA could pay for, right? Or once a month. Absolutely. They pay you yeah, yeah. whatever to, to have a day's worth of, of a rental, which wouldn't even cost that much. And, you know, it's just part of the, part of the dues. And I think neighbors, well, I mean, yeah, I, I sometimes that, have more. that one time to, to build that relationship. And next thing you know, they're, they're calling you back. So, yep. Yes, that, that could be another just avenue too. Rather than, I mean, it's good for marketing, but also as a potential, you know, make make a little money from it. And I always have Absolutely. stuff in my my house too. I don't live in an HOA, but it's like a you know, it's a neighborhood with a cul-de-sac and stuff that you know we can't throw out or the big mirror or whatever. Not gonna like, I take it to a dumpster that I you know I own in one of my stores, but uh, could, could be valued. Well, that's that kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, I know. But uh, it's it's funny when you. I mean, it's and that's I think also too why. Like who would have thought dumpster dudes and dumpsters like to open a business. And it's, so I feel like it's a business you don't really think about, but everyone needs to get rid of trash. And, um, everyone has in this country, definitely everyone has a lot of yeah, stuff that they need to get rid of. So, um, it's, it's just a business that you don't think about that is easy to run and, and does well. And what's your, what's your goal of where do you see this thing going? I don't know, first year and by, by year three or five, you know, kind of the bigger vision. What do you, what are you driving towards? Yeah, definitely. So my goal when I started this for the first year was to be the owner operator and just kind of work my butt off uh, yep. for the first year, just to really get this thing up and going, try and pay as much of that loan back as possible um, in my first year before I bring on a driver. Um, the driver obviously is going to free up more of my time and, and that would be great. So I can grow faster, as you can say, at that yep. point. Um, essentially, my long term goal is to um, actually open up multiple cities with dumpster dudes. Um, I, I, I want to open up multiple franchises. I'm, I come from Texas. I've got friends down in Texas that, you know, would love to be a part of something like this. Um, so that's my ultimate goal is to build up Richmond, be the number one here in Richmond, and then venture out to Other nearby markets. cities around Richmond, like Charlottesville or something. Um, and then head to, you know, open up maybe in Texas with some family or friends. Okay. What part of Texas? Uh, I grew up in North Texas by DFW, uh, but lived in Austin for 15 years before I moved out here. Okay. Okay. That's why your friend and the real estate company's still out there. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's where I met all the real estate okay. guys in Austin there. Yeah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Good. You have any questions for me in terms of just operating a franchise or scaling or anything on that? Um, yeah, definitely scaling. Um, and, and uh, you know, you come from the, the auto auto repair. So you, you've yep. got a lot of employees. So, um, yeah. one, what, what do you recommend when it comes to looking for an employee? And, and then of course, yeah, scaling, um, obviously any recommendation on how to scale and open more. Yeah. So for the employee side, you know, the biggest thing we, we look for are, is to, to define like your core values. So like what are, core values are like who you are as a person. And so ideally you want to surround yourself with other people who, who share your core values. So, you know, ours are, we want people that are driven, right? So they want to win. They hopefully are self-motivated. They, they don't need to like, 
someone to like push them every day, right? Because they are driven, they want to win. Like those are our best employees are the ones that have kind of built in hustle, you could say. Uh, we want people that are uh, team players, right? Because we're like a team sport. And so for us, it's very important that people are willing to help each other. They want to share. They sure. want to like, you know, look, look to, to help others as much as they can. We want people that are um, positive and they're friendly. They smile, right? Like they're, they're fun to be around. They don't sound like they just like are super grumpy and negative all the time. Uh, and then for us, we want people with, with, with very high integrity, obviously in automotive, there's there's mistrust and there's a lot of things that could, you know, pe- people do that aren't great. And so, you yeah. know, we, we look for people with super high integrity that's never questioned, it's never an issue. And so that's what we look for and what we want to surround ourselves with. Now for you, it's, it's you know, kind of defining, hey, what are the core values of the people? Uh, and, and it could be could be drive. I think accountability is huge. Like, are you going to do what you said you got to do, right? Whether it's, right. they're going to drop that, they're off. They're going to pick it up at a certain time. Like, you know, it's all these small commitments that they need to follow through on. Otherwise, like, you know, you know your customer experience drops significantly. Um, and so I think you, finding the, and then, and then, then like in the interview process, you're trying to go through and then, you know, design questions that are around, you know, looking for those core values, right? So you can't just say to somebody, oh, like, do you have good integrity or not? Right. It's like, tell me, tell me about a time where, you know, one of your coworkers did, something that you knew wasn't right or you know you want them to have you tell you stories or explain you know what does x mean to you or or whatever it is like that's the best way to to go about it and you know for you it's like you know i I would look to, to say hey what's your highest what's the highest and best use of your time which is to which is to to probably work on the 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 commercial side work on the the marketing right and then you want to then spend as much of your time focused on on that which is the highest and best use and then look to to hire that driver as as soon as you can so that you can accelerate accelerate your growth because if you want to scale the only way you could do it is if you kind of get yourself out of some of that that day-to-day stuff um sure because that's what can hold you back so i would yeah, you know, obviously there's a cash flow constraint as you, as you build it, but as soon as you feel like, hey, this thing, like I've got enough money to pay this guy, um, if you're looking to grow it, I would look to get off off the truck um, as soon as you can, so you can focus on growth. So for sure. And how do you feel about? Because I know I was listening to your podcast. How do you feel about um, like purchasing? I, I know you're big on purchasing other um, like auto repair shops and then growing that way. Um, yep. I've, Honestly, I hadn't even started looking into it in this business, how that would be possible. But, um, you know, a big fan of, you're a big fan of doing that. You know, like, what would you recommend looking for? Yeah. So on the acquisition side, uh, in in your case, you know, obviously it'd be buying, it'd be by kind of the the phone numbers and I guess the assets to a degree. Now, obviously they'd have to, they'd have to fit, but like, but yeah, I mean, you find another guy who started a you know, a dumpster company who's an independent and, you know, he doesn't want to do it anymore. He wants to retire. He's going to move. Like, you know, you could buy the phone number, right? Which then gets routed to you. You could technically buy his assets, which, you know, if they're in good shape, you get them re, you know, powder coated or whatever to be bright sure, orange sure. with your phone number. Yeah. Um, but there's tons, there's tons of, tons of opportunity out there. Right. And that is yeah. one way if, you know, financially it made sense, you could do it. I'd also, if I was, if I was doing it, you know, obviously the assets have a value, you know, you'd, you'd figure out the depreciated value of them. Um, but then if, you know, you could track how many calls come through that phone number and just pay them a percentage of the sales that you get as you grow. Um, Cause if his business is oh, kind of good. already, yeah. if his business is kind of already dying down, you don't want to like pay him on this number that, you know, maybe it doesn't even generate enough versus you said, Hey, I'll pay you, I don't know, 10, 10% or I don't know, some number of, you know, for the next two years, any sales that come in through your through your number. Um, that's a good idea. Do you think about that? Yeah. Plus, plus, then maybe whatever the asset value is, and so I don't know, that'd be a way. You know, you could you could try to, you know, make it more of a win win. I know that's how like property management companies. That's how they usually trade. Is sure. it's it's highly contingency based because a lot of times you know the clients will leave or I don't know. There's some sort of issue, and then so they don't want to pay on this because um, there's like no contracts and it's it's highly variable and so that is how they get out of it so yeah that would be what i would i would look for on the acquisition side um and just continue i mean but but even within your market like there's a ton of potential like so i wouldn't yeah. i wouldn't i wouldn't focus too much on growing some of the other areas until you really got you know richmond to at least a million dollars a year right 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 um, yeah definitely i mean i can probably agree with that and that's good advice um yeah that's just a distraction versus like you continue to grow here you already have the 
the assets, you've already got the territory, you've already got the brand, you've already like, you've already done a lot of the work. It's just a matter of, you know, kind of continuing to, to grow it within it. And then I think once you start to feel, all right, now we're starting to not reach capacity, but you, now you're starting to feel like you have a really good handle on it. Um, maybe you've got somebody on your team who's, who's risen from a driver to kind of a more of a senior manager role who can take over a lot of the, the daily responsibilities and you can then focus on, let's go get, you know, a, a bigger thing open, right? I mean, yeah. it's one thing to be your neighbor. If it's a neighboring territory, that that's, feels a little bit more natural than, you know, to go out in Texas and sure. fly back and forth and all the, you know, all the, all the things associated with that. I mean, that's, at least for me, that's been like, Getting on a plane has been the restriction <laughs> when we think about our growth, just because of the headache and the, I don't know, just the, the overhead involved versus well, what if we couldn't, we didn't have to get on a plane and we could just grow, you know, within a car ride. Um, and, and, you know, we live in, you know, between Richmond and DC and Philly, like we live in one of the most populated areas. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And so ton, a ton, a ton of opportunity without complicating your life unnecessarily. So, yeah, that's a good point. Good advice for sure. Yeah. Um, and, and that's my problem. I get impatient. I want to <laughs> go and go and I got to stop and yep. concentrate on this first. Yeah. So get this thing really going. And then, cause you said you already made the big investment. You've already got the infrastructure. You got, you got everything you need. It's just, you just got to get your name out there. And as you can, I mean, even, right. you know, double and hopefully continue to double every month or at least grow by five, five grand or so per month. And it'll just start for compounding sure. as you, as you build it. Um, yeah. What are some questions or what are some advice that you have for someone who's, who's just getting down, you know, the path, finding a franchise, maybe, you know, advice you'd give yourself back in January or December? Uh, definitely. Um, well, uh, first advice is uh, they're, they're already doing it. They're listening to your podcast here. It's, it's understanding. I, I was listening to you before I even considered a franchise um, just because it, understanding uh, what you're getting into. I've never done a franchise, never knew what an FDD was. Um, so it, that's the first advice I'd give is make sure you understand the whole franchise world. Um, the second advice is, is just really to understand what you are looking for as a business owner. I've never been more happier than this business I'm in right now. And it's dumpsters. Um, it just, what about it? What about it makes you happy? Like let that make um, you smile. I think, for me, I, I'm not big on um, sitting behind a desk, you know, corporate America kind of stuff. I'm, I'm in a truck, I'm driving around. Every day is different. Every situation, every customer is completely different um, and, and how I have to do things, whether it's the driveway I'm putting the dumpster in is goes left, goes right, different customers. It's, it's yeah. all a challenge every day and, and I, it makes me so happy to um, take on these challenges. You know, how I, I sit it's here awesome. and think, how, how can I be better? How can I separate myself? And I'm constantly thinking of the business. And, and I think that's a good place to be where when you're happy and the business is constantly on your mind and it's a good thing. Um, so that took me time to realize what I wanted out of a business. Uh, cause I knew going into, you know, if I opened a restaurant franchise or, or what have you, like I was going to be miserable and I knew that mm -hmm. and that's not worth it. So I think really understanding what you're looking for and what you want out of the business is so important. Yep. That's great. And everybody's different. Right. And that's, I think what's, yeah, what's amazing sure. too, is like, you know, for you, like I said, working with your hands every day is different. You're not behind a desk and like you got fresh air and you're talking to other real estate guys and you're into real estate, right? Like it That's aligns right. with all these things. And like the, and for a lot of people, the business itself, like whether it's dumpsters or cars is kind of irrelevant, right? It's, it's everything else around it that I think is, you know, usually what people are going after. Um, right. Completely agree. hundred percent agree. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's the most important thing. You've got to understand yep. what you want. Yep. And getting clarity, clarity around that. And yeah, even like we looked into the food, fast food business, it was a pizza, pizza, Little Caesars. And, and we sure. found out you needed like 20 ish, 20 to 30 part time like kids basically for every location. And we're like, holy shit, like we got five, you know, we have five or six at a location. We're thinking 20 right. to 30. And like, you know, our goal, we don't want one. We don't like, we'd have to do the math and make home. We like how many people we'd have to have and just to, you know, it's minimum wage and there's high turnover and just like, exactly. Like if it, that, if that feels heavy to you, right. And if that feels like, oh my God, like, why would I, why do you want to do that? Like, you probably shouldn't do it versus, you know, if you feel if, Hey, if somebody else is like, no problem, like I got no problem managing X, Y, and Z and right. And for, for you, you have zero employees right now. Right. And like, you know, maybe you'll right. have a handful, but like, you're never going to have 20 or 30 minimum wage kids running around that are part-time. Right? right. Um, 
And so I think that's like the key is really getting clear on, on what you want and what you don't want. And then that helps you narrow in your, your focus. A hundred percent. I mean, that's, that's exactly right. You know, I, I just looked at, you know, you've got the sexy franchises that are out there that everyone sees. And at the same yep. time, it's just like, you've got to understand what also comes with that. And, and I knew myself, I know how I work and I know that wouldn't have been me. So this it's, it's worked out perfectly. Yep. That's awesome. Good. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm happy to happy to hear and happy I could help you through that through that part of it. Absolutely. And, um, it's been great. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's that's all I got. Thanks, Mike, for coming on and sharing your story. And, you know, super excited to see where you take this over the next uh, you know couple of years here. And um, how can people get a hold of you if they're interested in, in, you know, learning more about Dumpster Dudes and your experience? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, my I mean, I'll just you can get I, <laughs> I don't really have, we've got a, a website or whatever, but um, my personal email, if anyone ever wants to reach out, I'll be more than happy to. It's just uh, mike.oakley at dumpsterdudes.com. Just, okay. just reach out to me there and um, and I'll be more than happy to talk about anything. Awesome. If everybody listening wants to get uh, connected with Dumpster Dudes on a corporate level and look at to see if a franchise is available in your market, they can shoot me a message on, on Twitter or LinkedIn or, or email me. Uh, any anywhere you can find me and i uh would be happy to help you on the journey as well so that is all we'll see you next time that's all we got for this episode with the business with beers podcast one thing that would really help both us and other new potential listeners is to rate the show and leave a comment in itunes stitcher wherever you listen also make sure to link up with me on your preferred social media platforms linkedin instagram twitter facebook you can find all my links at brianbeers.com please just share the podcast with anyone who you think might enjoy it and until next time remember to take the actions others won't to live the life that others don't